Got a bunch of camera nerds over here. Oh yeah, bunch of them. doing real stuff. Doing real camera stuff. So dumb. And by real, I mean like, we're playing <laughs> asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We're at my shop right now and we're actually getting prepped to go on a shoot. Yeah. So hence the camera mount, hence uh, baby Kato, um, Brandon Kato actually helping us. We got Tyler helping us, but we're just mounting cameras. We're getting ready to do a shoot, should be a lot of fun, and there will be a full autofocus video on that. But uh, I wanted to do an intro to this autofocus video. We had a chance to go to Philly for Formula Drift, and we had a chance to stop by Jamie Orr's shop. It's amazing. Unfortunately, we were so limited on time, we just did a quick shop tour. I didn't even have a chance to do an intro. So here's the intro. But with that said, next time we're in Philly, we're gonna stop by Jamie's shop and we're gonna do a way more detailed feature on a lot of those cars. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I wish I could say, Lewis, off, no. Leaf, off. Oh, there's a, something. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, on. All right, hey. Hey. Oh. oh. There's a database of people just screaming at Alexas and stuff. Right. <laughs> Well, we're not here to scream at Alexa, even though I did earlier. Uh, we're actually at your shop. This is the Volkswagen shop of Volkswagen shops. I know this place is special because you do a lot of stuff with Volkswagen. But also, I know this is really special because, like, I saw, I've seen that car before, and I've played with the shifter in that car because that was uh, my buddy Fish's place. And I know he's a Volkswagen nerd because he has a Volkswagen dealership, right? So uh, we've crossed paths before over the years, but uh, unfortunately I've, we've never really had a chance to hang out. Finally, we're in the Philadelphia area. We figured we'll, we'll stop by and just check out your shop. So tell us a little bit about this place. Is this your like Volkswagen paradise or what? Or night, no, it, it is. Um, <laughs> th this is where I spend 18 hours of my day, seven days a week. This is. Yeah, everything I do ends up here, everything I dream of. I build a lot of cars abroad and they end up here on display and to be fixed once I break them. And yeah, it, it's kind of grown organically. This has not been planned. Um, it was just a cool shop, an old steelwork shop. And yeah, this is, yeah, it's a lot. I get overwhelmed sometimes coming in with just how much stuff there is to do every day, but. Well, I'm yeah. sorry, um, we came here, I, I guess kind of semi unannounced and you're like frazzled right now, just as we are. We, we have to catch a flight soon. So we're gonna try to keep this brief even though our videos are super long, but I think what we'll do for now, there's so many cars to talk about, which is okay because we'll reserve some next time, uh, for next time we come back. But there's some key ones that I wanna talk about, including this one that's brand new. Uh, that just got released, right? Next month, not even out. Well, yes. During yes. once people see it, that <laughs> it will. Exactly. It w yeah. That just got released. Um, we're gonna rearrange some cars real quick, and then we'll get back to it. So this is gonna start. I'll take that ten percent. Uh, zero if the battery's disconnected. Oh. Okay. Can we just push it out? <laughs> sure, that's faster. Let me just shift on the tree here. You good? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Double the horsepower. <laughs> yep. I don't think you're going that fast. Jamie, do your neighbors just call you the crazy Volkswagen guy? No, they call me when their cars are broken and they need help, <laughs> which is great because I get to be friends with them and they're super chill. What a great one liner. But there's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other, uh, at least they don't call you the crazy cat lady kind of guy. No, but they do literally. One of them had a very broken Volkswagen. They were like, oh, yeah, you should just have this. Like, you seem <laughs> like. Yeah. Here, you're, you're, have you're, this. You don't have enough. You're going to adopt this. You'll take care of this. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez. 
runs okay for a car that doesn't exist. It exists to me. I'm looking at it right I mean, now. Sure, but there's no chassis number. This car is not, it, it's, it's not a Volkswagen. I built it myself, so it's, yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that for sure. <sighs> All right, which one next? I guess. All right, this one's got a cool story. This All one's right. pretty wild. I'm, I'm, we're so lucky to be able to hear all these too. Oh, look at those seats. I will see if the battery has enough juice. My vote is for more storage, for more cars. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna start, honestly. Nope. Let's push, push gang. Uh, just don't push by the spoiler. <laughs> yeah. All right, heave ho. V dub nerds. Beep beep. <laughs> what do you think, Kyler? This is great. If I was a really big Volkswagen fan, I would. Have a pretty big hard on. Is that your favorite website? That's kind of a shame. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I personally have not spent very much time there, but it looks like it's pretty good. Which which this, one? We're, we're, we're uh, commenting on the wheel horse website. Are you guys talking about wheel Yeah. You have to choose one. I had to choose one of these wheels. There are way too many options to soak this all in right now. These PBSs? I've never even seen them. Dude, those are pretty rowdy. Like, what even is this? Actually, Look, I'm kind of. I already used that today, so. I'm kind of feeling these. Oh, here we go. Hold on. I'm taking these loaded switch. I like that. Those are Azev Type A's, which are like a cult wheel for the like late early, like kind of mid '90s VWs. I'm way into that. Like that's one of like the top three. Those, the Barbies, and the BBSs were like the trifecta. Oh yeah, everyone wrote those. Yeah. I love Fat Fives. Push this one up to the. So this sat in the desert for. 20 years, it was one of the first golfs sold in the USA. It has all this like weird handmade stuff in the factory on it. Wow. See, this is the stuff that's interesting to me. So, I, hey, you're running KWs on your uh, Skyline, right? I, I have KWs on all my all right. cars. Let, let's pause for a second because yeah. Yeah. you may have some cool KWs, uh -huh. but these are the, uh, the ultra ultra slam ones. Oh my like god. Like they're so cheap. Oh my god. <laughs> so to make it even worse, come over here where we have the bin. These are the fronts, which are so small the chassis will sit on the floor. Wow. And it's the front, so it has drums on the front. It's a Jeez. VW Rabbit with factory drum brakes all around on a three thousand dollar set of suspension. <laughs> what do they say to you when you ask them to make this stuff? They're like uh, it's not gonna work, sir. No, I think they trust me. They're like, <laughs> it's probably not, we would think it wouldn't work, but sure, we trust you. They're like, who the heck is, is even ordering this stuff? And, and they're like, it's Jamie R. And then they're like, okay. And it right. has the five valve per cylinder engine swapped into it. So it has double, triple the horsepower. And then we put drum brakes on it just to be obscure. Wow. But it also sits in weight, so maybe in another like five years I'll make it run. Until then, we are pushing, gentlemen. It's like the tortoise and the hare. Sounds clean. And every one of the cars has a custom shift knob. So this one's Cerakoted orange. All right, are we clear of the door? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, sorry, KW. What the heck? It serves so many purposes. Uh-huh. They're so useful. <laughs> I just got banned. <laughs> Klaus! <laughs> look what he's doing to your suspension. Are you sure to go on Klaus? <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's just there on Malish. Yeah. Time problem? <laughs> uh, um, look, look, over there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, this is all Lewis's fault. Yeah. Uh, Lewis? I'm sorry. So, okay. So yesterday, Sean from Volkswagen, Sean, I know you're watching this. He came by at the shop. He drove seven hours, right? Seven hours? Seven hours round trip. Yeah, seven hours round trip to wash and detail as many cars as possible. And there was one car that he missed. It's that one up there that I wanted to shoot. So 
So you walk in, and it's all set up. We've got the beautiful unreleased Golf 8. We have all my other cars. And you're like, I want the one up there that hasn't been started in two years. The one that's not detailed. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> Damn. Look at this lift setup, though. Huh? Bed and pack for the win, as always. I think that this needs to make its way over to your house. To my shop? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right, bed and pack. You're going to. On top of one. Because it is. Jeez. Okay. It's the city. I love, love, love these plates so much. So that's Gauteng province, which is Johannesburg in wow. South Africa, where this car was when I bought it. Amazing. And you haven't heard the stories yet, but... Yeah, we'll talk about it when... when whenever you're ready. I won't spoil when, yeah, it. Yeah, whenever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be ready soon. All right. Okay. What can do you we, want next? Should we move that down then so you can take yeah, some pictures? Okay. Move that down. Okay. Right over here. We, invaded, we invaded Jamie's space. Okay. I'm going to, I need a helper. Okay. This oil pan is like an inch and a half off the ground. So when I come down, just make sure it doesn't like dig in. If it kisses it, we're fine. But I, we literally cracked the oil pan 30 minutes before going on the Nürburgring Norseleifer with it, and I had oh. to change the oil pan on the side of the ring. Oh, um, nice. So. <laughs> I'll just pick it up when you. It won't, uh, dude. It's. I, I I see those guns, but I don't think you're picking up this motor. So just if you see it's gonna hit, we'll just grab some wood. Been so long, I forgot it's right hand drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I was rolling on that. <laughs> it is from South Africa. Now I have three people watching and nobody pushing. But... <laughs> Jeez, guys. Look at, look at this. All right. Are you assuming the position? So we gotta go gently. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this thing's locked. <laughs> Something is wrong. All right, you ready to start this up? Yeah, sure. Because we're not yeah. fishing it, apparently. All right. All right. You really ready? Sure. Is it really loud? I'm not trying to like build this up or whatever, like overhype this. Hold on, hold on. I got my earplugs for the very far Let's see if it'll start. And maybe the battery's. Did it clear? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's getting closer. Yeah? Whoa. Okay, you can shut it off. You can shut it off. Wait, 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 come this way. Oh my goodness. The interior is crazy. Wow, now it smells in yeah. here. Yeah. Jeez. 
So it's running full CAN bus. That's the 2009 style. Right, there's a whole. Okay. Let, let's touch on the purple one real quick. All right. Because that's the one that actually inspired you to build this. You were saying that you knew that you could accomplish something like the Atlas because you built this, right? Yep. So what is this? This is a, essentially a Volkswagen Caddy van, but they're not available in the USA. And for a lot of car enthusiasts, you'll know that we can't import cars that are less than 25 years old. So I had this dumb idea of how far back in a car's existence do you have to go? Because people are always like, hey, just pull the motor out, bring it in as parts. But on a unibody car, once it has a VIN assigned, it's always a car. You pull the motor out, it's still a car. Customs. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not messing with that. So I went all the way back to going back to your motorsport comment, went back to the factory where this was born, laser welded together, and then it was taken off the production line. So no paint, wiring, chassis number, nothing. This car was never born. It was a bunch of sheet metal. So there were no doors, nothing. And I flew to Europe, went to the factory with a trailer, and I was so stoked. And I pull up and there's just hands in his forklift. I'm like, what a great day this is, it's gonna be amazing. He's like, I don't care. Where do you want this? It's my job to drive forklift. He's <laughs> Russian now in my accent. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is like a one in a million. Like this is, he's like, yeah, okay. But why did this exist though? Was it accidentally taken off or was it something you requested? Or? I requested for a long time and I wanted to do a new Scirocco or a Caddy. I wanted to do something that wasn't here and right. that was always like, uh, maybe, uh, no. And then I got an email of, hey, so I don't know why it was taken off the line, but they do them for measuring, for testing, for demonstration, for training, for a lot of reasons. So when you go to the factory, sometimes you'll see them just being tested. And that's an important part for any manufacturer. So this was likely that. It came off, got measured, and instead of going back on, they said, fine, it's done. And so I imported it literally just completely empty. And then every single bolt, every single wire, every module has been installed literally here. There's no parts for them in the US. So it has a US EPA compliant drivetrain and all the modules are US, but I then had to integrate them to the platform. And then just before SEMA, the windshield got shipped overnight from Germany in a great big pallet, literally FedEx Express overnight, put it in, trucked it out to SEMA. So it's not a Volkswagen, it's not anything, it doesn't exist. It's insured, but it's insured using the part number of the shell, of the chassis. Because the insurance company is like, you have to have some number. And that's what I did. Um, so you're telling me, and you painted it here then? Everything, yeah. So again, I nerded out. So the paint's from BASF, who are the OEM Volkswagen supplier at the factory. And then they stepped up to glasser it. But yeah, so it's, this is an OEM VW color from the early 90s, which was then re-released on some limited edition cars. And yeah, the whole thing's... Okay, but just ignore this. That, but. Okay, so I have so many questions. Uh, this is this is essentially like the equivalent of just getting a car or a truck that you just cannot have because of the 25-year rule, right? Yep. Because you could see these all day as like delivery vehicles sure. and stuff in Germany or in Europe. Yep, but the difference is... What made it special is no manufacturer will sell you a chassis with no VIN. It just doesn't happen. If you're a motorsport team, perhaps, and then you assign a VIN. So that's the, the secret sauce. And people ask me, like, hey, can you do another one? Like, hey, if I give you $100,000, $200,000, can you build it? I'm like, I can't. I'm, without, without getting this priceless shell, I right. just can't do it. Um, yeah, this thing just sits. That's why it's all dusty. I need to get back to it. But I've kind of, I achieved what I wanted to to a certain point. There's more that I want to do on this. And then, like normal, you know, the catch can has color match bolts and all sorts of silliness. And Okay, so then what is your purpose for this? What do you use this for? Just to take Nothing. it to it shows? Nothing, it can't drive. Right, so it can't drive. It can just exist. One day, once I've absolutely finished it to my point, I will be able to register it as the manufacturer and have a VIN assigned. So it'll never have a Volkswagen VIN, it will have my own. So it's right. a Jamie Mobile or a whatever you want to call it. So that is achievable, I can do that. I just need time and I have so many other projects that yeah. my own stuff just kind of, 
bits and gets dusty, which makes me feel kind of bad, but. Well, no, it's cool. I mean, this is so inspiring though. You know, I've never even heard of something like this. I mean, people build kit cars. So, I mean, it's essentially a kit car, but there's no kit and there's no registration process. And when you get a kit car, it comes with a certificate of origin that allows the registration path, whereas this doesn't. Right, but eventually, once you do go through that path, you can drive this. Yeah. And then, but, but, but it's interesting in that come whatever, wh when will these become legal? I mean, the, the very first version of this was probably 2004. Right, so then it so would- So we're still- Right, we're still- Eight years away from the very first. It's not about that for me. I just, yeah. I just, I just want to keep building. Yeah. I just, just want new challenges. That's, and that's awesome. I just had this premonition that I could do this. Right. And I would say I have, but not finished, finished, but I got to the point where it runs and drives and starts and stops and can go on a racetrack. And we took it down to English town in the quarter mile and stuff. And like, but I never expected my career to go on, but now I also have the confidence to go into the factory and be like, I can build this. You know, it takes you six hours from the first bolt to be finished on to build a car. Yeah, it takes me six months, but I know every single bolt, every single wire, I have the confidence that I can work with them. Yeah. So, yeah. That is incredible. But yeah, absolutely just no VIN. What a great <laughs> story. Okay. So, unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, you know, we did the full feature on this, but can you just quickly tell us what each one is? And then we'll come back and we'll do way more features. You, you, you guys tell us which ones you want us to feature. Uh, but like, I just, I just at least want to know what each one is. So this one is the new GTI. Mark 8, not available here until fourth quarter. So this one I did as an homage to BBS. So this one belongs to Volkswagen of America, but it's a pre-production German one. But this one, this is the only car in here that isn't mine other than that one. The other ones, I'm going to try and keep this to two minutes or yeah, less. Yeah. South African City Golf, made until 2008, 2009. I flew into South Africa in five days. I bought one, completely restored it. It's now got a 3.6 liter, 300 horsepower V6 swap. It's right-hand drive. Yeah, my favorite part is how modern the interior But looks. that's factory. Yeah. They just kept making them so it has a full CAN bus, everything. It's kind of like how uh, in Mexico they still had the bug till yep. whatever, what, And the Corollas and everything yeah. else down there. And the Nissan Sentras. <laughs> so yeah, this, this one is like, this means so much to me, building in South Africa, in Johannesburg. It's also the loudest car I've owned or possibly ever heard. Mm -hmm. It's off the charts loud. Um, it's banned from Austria. I drove it on the Nürburgring. It's literally legally banned from an entire country because of how loud it is. <laughs> um, so let's talk about That's that. That's something next time. to be proud of. Um, Volkswagen Fox 16 valve, direct to head throttle bodies, Audi V8 manifold. You can see the valves when it's running. I've driven 20,000 miles with no air filters. I shipped this to Europe, drove it on the Nurburgring, put it on stage with Volkswagen there. Golf Rally, all factory wide bodies like the E30. M3 Lancia Delta Integrale, so it's factory all-wheel drive, factory supercharged, factory wide body kit. They made 5,000 for FIA homologation. It's pretty. Golf Country, you might have seen this with Fish. Again, yeah. factory Rays, factory subframe for the whole chassis, factory all-wheel drive. I have one outside I did coast to coast during last winter with the ice storms, so that's cool. Factory Volkswagen Polo Harlequin. I brought this in temporarily for show use. I built it for an event over in Europe called MIVW. It's now 300-ish horsepower for 20 valve turbo, 1.8. Um, all CNC custom mounts, BBS RS, three piece. Uh, I love the oil pan. It, which is an inch off the ground, but <laughs> color coded. Yeah. Um, yeah, even the bolts of the oil pan are color coded. So that was a blast. That's a factory paint job. So. Ford Fiesta Mark III 1990, the same as my first ever car when I was 17. This is a beautiful version, low mileage, which I just put RS's coils and the original radio from when I was 17. Volkswagen Dasher Coupe, same as a Passat, 4,000 miles, bought it from a, a hoarder lady who never drove it. It's, it's nuts. 
and a Volkswagen Golf wagon in the taxi color in Germany, but was special ordered by a gentleman there because he wanted it white, but not boring white fish. He's like your nemesis. <laughs> he wanted white, but not white. He then passed away and I bought it from his widow out of the garage that he parked it in and then passed away. Full service history, literally garage kept from the day it was bought. It's like the dream. Okay, most people wouldn't dream of a beige golf. For me, that's my dream, but anybody can appreciate that dream. Finding your AE86 one owner in a garage is the dream. Honda Acti, British model, not JDM. Um, this was used in McDonald's adverts and films and stuff, Adoka. There's more in the back. We are running out of time. Larry is literally going to miss his flight. So, <laughs> hey, wait, are we, we, oh, all right. Let's, let's do some autofocus thing. Comment below for which one you'd like to see more. Yeah, exactly. Back, back to you, Larry. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been such a pleasure. Cannot wait to come back and shoot more cool Volkswagen stuff. There's just so many things, so many stories. Hours and hours of stories, which I know you want to share because you want to keep this culture alive. You're like single-handedly like holding all of this uh, awesome knowledge and you're really inspiring so many people to build and to love and to restore. So I love that. And you're giving too much props because I'm inspired by every time I go to a car show, whether it's South Africa, or Brazil, Argentina, USA, Europe, I just love the culture and just so like, oh, what boat is this? Why did you do that? I just love soaking that in. And if I get to share it with any of the cars, I'm super, super stoked. So thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. See you guys in the next video.